Now, that previous picture was me in a Boy Scout uniform. This is Mr. Ellison in his uniform. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. Uh, he and I are kind of like the odd couple, if you've ever seen the movie. And I'm the guy that probably looked more like this when we were in the Marine Corps, actually. And the Marine Corps is pretty, pretty squared away in terms of how we wear a uniform. But uh, when I walked in that uh, parade with the, uh, with the veterans, you know, I made some uh, kind of lasting impressions. And you see some pictures that I'm flipping through here, and those are veterans. And they're wearing medallions and ribbons on their hats. And they have things that are on their chest in terms of memorabilia. And every one of those things means something. It was something that they were involved in. And I would submit to you that as you travel day to day, that you see these people. You see them. You see them in the walls. You see them in different locations. And they're wearing those. But you're probably not inclined to walk up to them to ask, hi, or to introduce yourself. And to ask about what these things are that are on their chests. On their hat. But if you did, I would submit that you'd learn an awful lot about those that have sacrificed an awful lot for our country and really allow us to do the things sit in this room today. So take the time. Take the time to walk with them and spend a little bit of time with them. It will be amazing the perspective you will gain on the places they have been and the things that they have done. Okay, those veterans taught me some things, and uh, my education kind of started with that picture. What, somebody tell me what that picture is. What is that a picture of? Raise your hand, Tom. Ma'am, sir, what is it? That is, those are the Marines raising a flag on an island. What's that island? What's that island back there? Sorry? That is Iwo Jima. Okay, and that's off the coast of what big country? And what war was that in? It was in World War, Second World War, right? And so there were 20,000 Japanese that were defending the homeland of Japan. This is 1945. The war's been on for four years. Four years. And we're getting close. We're closing in on mainland Japan. So there's 20,000 Japanese there. At the end of this fight, there were only 1,100 prisoners. And there were 29,000 Marines landed there, and 6,800 were killed. 29,000 actually were, were wounded. It was more like 68,000 landed there. And a very, very, very significant fight in our time. And I will tell you this, that that flag when it went up could be seen across that entire island by everybody fighting there. And I will tell you this, that when that flag went up, that flag wasn't coming down. It wasn't coming down. Because that flag represented all those things we were as a nation. And everybody on those beaches could see that. And can you imagine how difficult it was to get up there? And it wasn't just because this was World War II, it was because that flag has great meaning. Case in point, back to Fort McHenry, 1814, in the Chesapeake. Fort McHenry. U.S. citizens surrounded by the British, hundreds of ships. Francis Scott Key, who wrote the National, yeah, right, let's the Star Spangled Banner, comes out, he's a messenger, he comes out to the ship and he sees a British admiral. And he says to the British admiral, I'm here to do the prisoner exchange because in these hundreds of ships you have patriots, U.S. citizens who have fought and who have captured and we're going to exchange British prisoners for American prisoners. And the British Admiral agreed, and then a few minutes later he came back and said, but that's not going to be necessary, because actually what we have done is we made an ultimatum to Fort McHenry. And uh, if they'll give up the fort, then the war will be over. And Francis Scott Key asked him, he said, how are you going to do that? And he said, well, they really don't have to give the fort up. All they have to do is take the flag down. And Francis Scott Key said, well, what if they don't take the flag down? He said, then we'll blow the flag down. So there that night, the flag didn't come down. And those hundred ships closed in around that, and they engaged the people 
at Fort McHenry. And you know, they were mostly women and children. They weren't even really combatants in there. And all night long, that flag was hit time and time again, but it never went down. The flag never went down. And in the morning, the British were sitting around, they stopped shooting, and the flag was tattered, there was only pieces of the flag, and it was hanging at an angle. Hanging at an angle. And Francis Scott, he went in, and he looked in, he went to the fort, and there were a number of dead Americans sitting around. And every time that flag had fallen down, someone had come out, put that flag back up. So when you see that flag at Iwakima, it goes back and has history. And it means something. It means something that's very important because in the battle of ideas, in the battle of ideas, that flag represents the United States as it always has. And a military man or woman is going to defend it that way. So that's a really big deal. And so I'm from Connecticut. And there's three statues of this. One is in Washington, which is the Marine Corps Monument. If you get a chance to go there, it's probably about as big as this area of the road. It's, it's an amazing sight. It looks just like that. And there are two other small ones. One is in Connecticut, actually in my home state. And uh, on the back of that monument are uh, the names of uh, some of my dad's close friends from World War II, who were Marines who fought, in, uh, fought in the Pacific, so kind of very close to me. But more important there is the, really is the, is the flag. But those veterans, they know some other things too they talk to me about, that this, this whole notion of fighting for your country and defending your flag comes at a great cost. And for those of you who have been to Arlington, this is a picture in the winter, and there's a, a man every year that puts a wreath on every, every one of the graves in Arlington to commemorate their great sacrifice to, uh, to our nation. And those veterans also know that defending the freedoms, the way our, our way of life, is not free. Does not come without great cost in terms of what we do. And I learned that from them during that period before I joined the Marine Corps. So freedom's not free. And again, it's about the flag. And back in World War II, in the period I talked about, we buried our loved ones overseas. We didn't bring them home. Today, as you know, we, we do bring them home. With great honor. With great honor as they come home. So, for me, and these are things that I couldn't tell Coach Paterno at the time, this is why I joined. But there was another aspect of it. The veterans taught me things, and the Boy Scout experience taught me things, but my education taught me things. And this is a, this slide here depicts a, a number of things that I think are really important. First of all, my education allowed me to appreciate cultures and different cultures and what they're about and what they believe in and different ideas and appreciation for those ideas and how people think the way they do. It allowed me to understand different forms of governance that exist around the world. It allowed me to understand what freedoms people enjoy and at what cost liberty comes to them in different locations. No different than what you do here today. And that is your challenge to understand it. It is the challenge of your very talented faculty here to be able to allow you to think critically about that. But it's what provides perspectives. Because war is a clash of ideas. Without an understanding of the ideas, it's only a clash. And here, in, in your school and in your place, I think you understand that. Give great context to what we're doing today and to the situations that we're in today. So for me, what is going to be my part in this? You know, and this is a, uh, Norman, another one of those Norman Rockwell posters. And it shows the growth of a Boy Cub Scout the Boy Scout to those that are trying to do something for their country in different ways. Now I'm just not talking about being in the military, but those that do things, you know, that are, are firemen and, are, and are, uh, in our police departments around the country. And clearly, in the last two weeks, you see, saw an awful lot of that in what happened up in Boston and people that give great, greatly to our country. 